So we're going to begin to look at the structures that actually make prokaryotic cells very, very different from other eukaryotic cells. So we're going to start outside of the cell and work our way in. So one of the surface layers um, that's external to the cell wall is referred to as the glycocalyx. It's a gel-like layer made out of sugars, and it can be found in two different versions. Um, one is called the capsule. It is very distinct and gelatinous, okay? Um, if it's called a slime layer on the outside, that makes it diffuse um, and really irregular shaped. So off to the right, you can see that there's bacteria that have a capsule, okay? It's very, very distinct over here going around the outside, and it's, um, it looks a little granular, a little bit thicker. And as you can see, these cells that are along here are the cells in the intestine. And so what that capsule is doing for the bacteria is it's enabling um, some attachment. Plus, it's providing some protection for the bacteria so that the body can't destroy it. Okay? So the medical importance here is that th that, that glycocalyx is actually made out of polysaccharides. So it ends up being sticky. This is also what creates that biofilm on the surface of your teeth, um, and as well as helps it avoid white blood cells. So external to the cell um, is, in some cases, um, flagella, right? Those long microtubule type structures, long filament type structures that help for movement. And um, the attachment point is through what's called the basal body, and a hook. And so when we look at the diagram off to the right over here, this is the hook itself. Notice how it's curved at a right angle. Okay, then it has the basal body, which is embedded pieces of protein throughout both the outer cell wall, the peptidyl glycan, um, as well as the cell membrane. Okay, now the way this works is this actually whips around in a circle creating more of a airplane propeller motion, if you will. Most people think that the flagella wags back and forth like the tail of a dog, but that's actually not the case. It actually whips around. Now, if a bacterium has more than one flagella, like these shown here in E. coli, it can create a kind of goofy type of movement. And it will do this kind of tumbling um, when the flagella aren't in sync. Okay, so it causes the cell to kind of spin in one spot, and it doesn't really go anywhere. But then it will go into what's called a run, and that's when all the flagella end up going um, around in a circle, and they're in sync with each other. And then it'll go through a tumble. They'll kind of become asynchronous again. So it creates this really sporadic movement pattern. And so this diagram down here is depicting... Um, the, the kind of tumble versus run pattern that might be exhibited by bacteria. Now, the difference between picture A over here and picture B over here is that there is a gradient towards some kind of attractant, okay? Maybe that attractant is some kind of food, right, or light being present um, in the environment. So the movement that bacteria can respond to might be um, in response to something that's needed by the cell, or it could be negative movement away from something that maybe is toxic in the environment. So chemotaxis um, is movement in response to chemicals. Now, I'm going to tell you one way that I've always remembered this, and I would say that the word taxi is right there. And so the word taxi makes me think of, hey, taxi, catch a ride, right? And so in, for me, I'm thinking, hmm, movement, okay? So chemotaxis is movement in response to chemicals. Phototaxis, movement in response to light. Magnetotaxis is movement in response to the Earth's mag magnetic field. And aerotaxis would be movement towards oxygen, Okay, so if it's an aerobic bacteria, obviously it needs oxygen, it's going to move towards it. Okay, um, if it needs light because it's photosynthetic, it's going to have to move towards it. All right, so that's movement. Now, 
when we look at the flagella on the cells, um, we can classify bacteria sometimes based upon um, the number of flagella that they have, as well as the types of arrangement. So if there's a single flagellum, um, it's considered monotrichous. Okay, trichous refers to the um, flagellar arrangement on the cell. So mono meaning one, or sometimes they call it polar flagellum. All right, and that's where we see just a single flagellum at one end of the cell. Peritrichous is when there are many flagellums surrounding the entire cell. They go all the way around the perimeter, okay, um, of the cell. And so, oops, here, with this one up here, right, peri, uh -huh, I can't move my mouse very good, and up here, mono, wow, it's not wanting to move, I'm not using a mouse pad. And so, with this one, lofo, I don't really have a good way for you to remember this one, but lofo is where there's a tuft of flagella at one end of the cell. And then amphi um, is when you have flagella at opposite ends of the cell, almost like opposite poles. And I like to wave my hands back and forth, kind of right versus left, right versus left. And then um, that's basically indicating that the flagella are at opposite ends of the cell. So which pictures at the right demonstrate the terms up above? What would you call picture A up here? Okay. Hopefully, you recognize that that one is peritrichous. How about this one? Bacillus, single flagellum. Mmm, that one's a monotrichous or polar flagellum. Awesome. Uh oh, lost my, can't figure out how to get off my pointer options here. Get rid of that. Okay, so the pili are also structures that are external, and they're still um, made out of microtubules, um, but they're similar. They're they're similar to flagella in that way, but they're shorter and thinner. So when we look at them, we can see that they are very very thin compared to the flagellum. So when we look at picture A at the bottom, the flagellum is labeled. It's much thicker. Okay, then there's the tiny pili. Now, the pili could be in the form of what's called fimbria, and those are pili that enable attachment to specific surfaces because of proteins um, that are on the surface. And up here next to fimbria, it's supposed to say um, on the surface of the pili, okay? So give me my pointer back here, all right? So right here, let's fix that because of proteins on the surface of the pili, okay? So on the ends, right there, right there, right there, there's gonna be specialized proteins. And over here, we can see that here's a bacterium and its pili are literally attaching to those surface epithelial cells. That's enabling them to get inside of this tissue, okay? Your, um, the bad E. coli that infects you, the E. coli 0157H7 strain, does that with the small intestine. Now, there's another special type of pili, or pilus, which is singular, and it's called the F pilus, and that's a sex pilus. Not that there are bacteria that are male and female, but it enables them to exchange DNA as if they were sexually reproductive, okay? Um, it, it's a way for bacteria to exchange DNA as well in the form of plasmids, um, and enables a population to adapt and evolve fairly quickly. So through that process of conjugation that we learned about in the bacterial cell 